see if there's any eggs in there. If I see eggs, I know they've got a good laying queen. But if I see, um... it, it's weird because all I want to do is keep bees. And then I started selling honey. Well, I, I've always been in marketing. I, I, I sold advertising all my life. And so I, I like that part of it too. The packing business kind of just developed on its own. I wanted to just keep bees, but I had the honey, you got to do something with it. People wanted to buy it, so we started that. And now it's, that's kind of a big thing. Of course, I'm retired. I mean, it's just a, it's just a hobby. It's a hobby gone wild, though. It's not a... Well, we printed some books for uh, two famous writers on beekeeping. One was Richard Taylor, who lives in Trumansburg, and he was a doctor of philosophy, but his real love was beekeeping. If you could read one of his books, you'd want to run right out and start buying bees. I mean, he was just that enthusiastic over, over it. And then once we started printing his books, we started printing books for Dr. Roger Morris from Cornell, who was a worldwide writer on bee science. See, I was proofreading these books that he printed, and I said, it's hard work. You better read this book first. <laughs> We got to be really good friends with both these men, and one of my weaker moments, they convinced me I should buy a colony of bees just to play with. Well, it wasn't too long until uh, we had, had about uh, 250 colonies. We don't have that many now, but I mean, at one point we did. First time, Dwayne showed me uh, some hives that he had uptown here in a little grove, and I hadn't even got in back in where the, where the hives were, and one got my hair. <laughs> So he was trying to get that out of my hair. And All the kids, one way or the other, had had some part in the beekeeping. And our youngest son, he's actually in, has, has his own bees along with teaching. And, and Craig has his own bees, so he goes, takes care of his too, and, and Dwayne helps him when he can. Like when you started out, you used to, your hands would look like you had boxing gloves on. Yeah, they swell up. Because they'd swell up so bad. I couldn't believe how big they'd get. And you, uh, hard to ever get that anymore, do you? I don't know how many times I got stung yesterday. And, you know, they, so then I got involved in the Yuska Farmer's Market and I was real active there for years. I, I still go to the market after, it's my 37th year down there. And I've been buying honey here for more than a decade, I would guess. Uh, I got hooked on honey because my father-in-law was a beekeeper. And uh, so it's the only sweetener I use. I don't use sugar. And I buy it a gallon at a time because I use so much of it. We never go and get honey from a grocery store. We always try to get the local honey. I, I just feel like it tastes better and it's, it's just richer, has a little bit more nuance to it. You're gonna get the different kinds of honey, the buckwheat honey and the you know wildflower honey and it all tastes different. So you're not gonna find that. And this year, what, everybody's got 70, 80% loss? Yeah, big loss. And Everybody's scratching their head. I, I think, and, and my dad thinks also, it's just too cold for too long. Yeah, this first row, they're all empties. I've lost as many as 70% of my hives. Well, this has been going on for eight or 10 years now. I, I figure we probably average about a third of our bees. And my son works with me and we're uh, trying to keep about 150. So that means we're losing about 50 colonies every year. So. Every year I order, we order uh, 50 nukes to replace what we think we're going to lose when spring gets here. Colony collapse disorder is a phenomenon where you have a colony of honeybees that's going like gangbusters all summer long, but then starting in late July or August or September, the colony starts to lose its population. And so the colony to the beekeeper, who might be checking the colony every, every couple of weeks or so, um, it does look like the colony suddenly, almost suddenly collapses. And when a colony loses, starts losing a lot of bees, um, it's a downward spiral. Last year we only lost about 30%. Uh, the year before we only lost 15%. But that was the year that we didn't have any winter here, and that helps too. Mm -hmm. and that, last year we broke about even, and we're lucky if we can do that, I guess. It's hard to see bees with their head in the, in the cells, knowing that they all starve to death. The main concern um, that I've heard is just keeping enough colonies alive through the winter. It's not pesticides and it's not nutrition, because we live in a part of the world where there are a lot of, a lot of diversity in the vegetation. And as far as the business, uh, we had our ups and downs, but Nothing that we felt was really, you know, 
earth shaking. Then we lost the sun. Yeah. So we're going to be in the fix Our oldest son. And, uh, that, that's definitely the <coughs> hardest yeah. thing I've ever been through. Yeah. And uh, he and I were interested in the same things. We, our plans were he was going to be coming into business more, and I was going to be going doing the bees more. And so that yeah. that didn't work out. I tried to run the business for three years after he died. And yeah. Finally, I said that's it. I sold it. So. And he was in Vietnam. Went through. Uh, survived. Cope just about everything a man can cope with. Right. Over there. Uh, yeah. One of the last things he wrote before he came home was, he said, I just hope I'm, I can start to come back in business and take out, you know, start out from where I left off. And of course he could. He had a marital relationship that was going down the drain. And he couldn't cope with that, so he committed suicide. Mm -hmm. That <clears throat> far was the mm -hmm. most difficult. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I, I have a lot of beekeeper friends that have pretty stressful jobs and they say that going home and working with their bees is better than having a therapist and I, I really can sympathize. I have that same sense of peace and focus when I open up the beehive. It's a way to step into nature where everything's going along very smoothly and beautifully and cooperatively. Right there. Really. You know some people like skiing and you know, and work the bees. <laughs> and I really have been, been blessed with whatever I've done because I like doing it. I mean, it's just like the printing and the newspapers. You know, at the time I thought, you know, I wouldn't want to do anything else. Well, then I get into something else, I think, boy, I wouldn't want to do anything else. <laughs> it's like eight frames. It, it's rewarding because it's giving them something to do. Uh, the fellow just came, they came downstairs, he works for me now. He's doing real well. And uh, he was another kid that didn't have anything to do, you know. And, and he wasn't interested in sports and things like most of my other grandchildren are, so I had a fairly bad reaction last year. And uh, so I thought well, his parents got scared and they took him to the emergency room. And it was just a bad case of normal swelling, but I, I was afraid that he wouldn't want to work on them this year. And I asked him the other day, I said, now, you know, we're going to have to start working on bees pretty soon. Uh, do you want to, how do you feel about it? He said, oh, I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm going to get out there and work on them. The other day, he, a box came, he said, I got my shoes for this year. He's ready to go. I feel like it's probably one of the coolest things in the world because a lot of people don't get to a lot of people you know don't even see their relatives or passed away or all that you know so I feel like I definitely made the right choice in taking advantage of working with him and it makes us happy too because <laughs> it just teaches me so much and if I really wanted to I feel like I could produce honey someday and I think that would be something cool to do I think he could too I wouldn't know what to do with myself. Wanda wouldn't know what to do with me. <laughs> uh, what would the uh, um, human race do? Uh, Einstein said that uh, it, uh, we'd have four years, the human race would have four years if all the, the pollinating insects died, mostly honeybees. Uh, that, that's why when this colony collapse disorder started, people really got excited about it because they were hearing quotes like that and saying, oh my gosh, we gotta do something about this. We gotta find out what's killing our bees. We still have to find that out. Um, I mean, like, if all the bees got wiped out in the world and you couldn't, like, couldn't keep studying them, well, I'm not quite sure, not sure quite what that would be like. Oh boy. <laughs> You'd have to go to work. <laughs> Very quiet. We'd have to buzz around doing something else. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs>